at the Sunday folks, let's cross it today. So, need some input from people. We're talking about dual helixes in this case. Could be any kind of helix, but I was watching Chad had a video conference with Aaron Short last night on his channel. They've announced a upcoming giveaway for all this helix stuff, which is going to be really cool. So. Go sub to Chad's channel if you somehow are not. Check out Aaron as well. Give me subs and stuff if you like. Um, this is going to be a weird Sunday morning coffee thing. So, dual helixes. The idea that Aaron proposed last night was what I called a stomp dock. I've been thinking about that overnight because it seems like a really cool idea. So, imagine this. You're rocking out with your floor and you have your stomp as backup. Some people actually do this. You could even use a pod go for this sort of thing, but let's go with a little stomp. What if you had some sort of Ikea trippy cagey type thing? You know, if you've got your backpack, you can fit your your stomp, your your floor, and the stomp fits in the little side pocket. Perfection. They actually make these things for laptops that DJs use all the time to hold their components up. Little folding rack. Wouldn't it be cool? You have something you just pick out of your bag, plop down, and sit your stomp right on a blank spot on top of your helix floor so you can see both screens together. I think that would be cool. It would be a simple way. I think an even better way, if someone's going to manufacture this, if Chad is going to manufacture this for us, would be to include a nice little manual cap switch and dual wiring. On it. Why? Because if you're using your ATIC stump as a potential backup rig, what you could do is make a little patch bay on this metal gizmo and have the stump permanently wired into it and then wire that into the floor with your outputs going through this. So either or could work. If your floor somehow died and the stump is still going, boom one time shot hit a button transfer your signal out to that and go so i think that'd be pretty cool but got me thinking because with 3.0 there's a, an, a real easy way to hog all the dsp using all this polyphonic stuff and this is something we've been beta testing all the time running the hx stomp in the loop of the main floor or extending the signal chain out. So what I would do is come in very actually go through the first DSP of my Helix floor. Just the first one. And then I'd go on a loop out into the HX stomp. And then from the HX stomp out to other gear and out to the front of house, back to the amps to make noise. And that works really well. You just you know, instead of going from one line down to the next line, you're going from one line off to the HX stomp and out. Loads of DSP and the real cool advantage to that pre-3 was I could switch stuff in the barracks, I could switch stuff in the helix floor and the stomp would sit there doing all my delays and bits and pieces like that without real interruptions and because you have trails you can start switching presets on the helix floor and the time it takes to catch that, the stomp is sitting there just holding your tone for you. So you're running, you've seen maybe a couple of things in the Minimad Scientist group about these work history presets. That is the whole idea. That if half the DSP did a little stomp, you know, it may seem little, but she's a powerful little puppy. Let her run. All of your delays and stuff like that, or add a pressure on the end of that and run the delays through that, but always have a stomp sitting there in the end and that guy out the front of house. Use the massive floor to do crazy signal routing. That all works really well. You can come up with some really wild stuff. And if all hell breaks loose and you're in a live situation, you know, not my thing, but I, I test for disasters and stuff like that, check it out. Floor goes down, stomp stays up. Great. Stomp goes down, floor stays up. What's the chance of both of them going out? You know, if it, if it does, then it goes over. But 
at that point, think of the redundancy of that. Think of this extension of the DSP chain. And think of all the benefits it brings. You know, you're going to use your stomp as a backup, integrate it in, and make it one big, massive three DSP super system. It is the stuff. So, to show people how to do this, um, Jason and Constantine was trying to do the snapshot to snapshot floor to stomp thing yesterday, and he got it working. But explaining this, oof, it's not so easy. Doing it is, is pretty simple. But I figure one good way to show all this would be create a remote in the stomp. Create a preset in the in the floor, sorry, that controls the stomp like any other MIDI controller would. Piece of cake. So I will build that, and the whole idea with it is rip it apart. It'll show you the correct use of the forms of the command center in the big stomp. And it will show you a billion different ways to deal with the little stomp. You could go through switching snapshots on it, you could go through switching presets on it, you could drive it like you would with any MIDI controller almost. There's still some massive benefits to using an external MIDI controller. So what I've always done, I would recommend you do that. If you have a stomp, you gotta you gotta have one. But you can use a floor to do it. It should be cool. Anyway, comment below, like and subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will send an announcement. I'll put a link to this. You'll find the files for remoting your stomp over in the Line Six New Mass Miners Club. Have fun, guys.